Hello, welcome to Furious Driving, and we are at the NEC for the uh, Practical Classics, Lancaster Insurance Classic Cars. I'm sure there's something else in there restoration show here at the NEC and on the YouTubers stand we have once again my car the Crown Victoria Ian's car Betty which is the first time these two cars have been side by side the two imported big Fords which I'll be honest I thought Betty was an enormous car when I saw her on camera but now having seen her side by side with the Crown Vic uh, my perceptions have been changed uh, Crown Vic looks amazing I'm really pleased with this thing it's getting a lot of attention yesterday yesterday was fairly quiet on Friday but I guess it was a working weekday uh, Saturday, hopefully, we'll be really be busier. This is the restoration show, and so naturally, there is work going on. Uh, in this case, the restoration is Ian changing the wheel on Betty because already had a flat tire. Yesterday, we had Draper Tools very kindly come and brought a uh, tire pump and inflated it for him again. But now he's got a friend has appeared from from the internet and stolen my wheel brace, his jack, and we're going to go get the tire repaired outside the show by. Uh, a very helpful passerby. So this is good, good Samaritans at their finest. Next to Betty we have got not a Morris Marina, Austin Marina. This is a Griffin Waring Mark III Cavalier. I'll let Steph tell you the full story over on her channel. It's quite an epic adventure but basically uh, the Marina died in France on the way to the show so a last minute flight meant she got to Newcastle, I think it was Newcastle, and into this Cavalier and then drove from there to here and made it literally in the nick of time. But she's here, which is fantastic, along with our complete stand. I'll show you this and I'll tell you the rest of the show. So we have all manner of exciting, fun, uh, hub nut, furious driving and iDriver classic stuff. If you want to come and take a look at this, I'm particularly excited by the keyrings, badges and other things. We've now got added to the list of merchandise on this thing, new color hats, new t-shirts, Rover Alpha, because these were the two cars I was thinking of bringing, but obviously brought that one instead. Right, okay, enough of our stand. Let's go and look at everything else. So this is, right next to our stand, the Practical Classics Restorer of the Year show. So these are the ones that have been picked by, I think, the readers and the staff at the magazine to be their favourite restos of the year. Home restos, not professional, obviously. This is a um, MGTA, which is obviously a good job because it's one of the finalists. Very pretty. And we have... Series 1 Land Rover. A serial Land Rover restorer, I'm guessing. I do have a big soft spot for these. Looking very real. I'm guessing this is an old or original tilt. Lovely, lovely car. Then we have the Marina we uh, quickly touched on in the preview video, which is slightly different to the other ones, and it's not pristine perfect, but it's a massively updated and improved thing, a T16 turbo under the bonnet. So this thing is a bit of a rip-snorting, fire-breathing monster. Quite an interesting colour, so that's some quite clever engineering going into this thing. Next up we have Porsche 914. Ha, <laughs> a typical story here. Phil never planned a full resto on his Porsche, but the car had other ideas. We've all been there. And the Manta GTI 3.0, it says on the side of it. Okay, this is a car that they'd never built from factory, but was home built by the guy who wished they did. So, and finally, we have the Elise, quite a modern classic. Wouldn't be a car old enough to be needing restoring, you wouldn't think, but there you go, they are actually getting on to over 20 years old, which is a long time in car years. So yeah, who will be the eventual winner of the uh, Practical Classics? Restorer of the Year Award. Well, we'll find out in oh, tomorrow night, I guess. Oh, these guys weren't here when I was doing the preview walk around. This is the Mercedes Benz Club, which apparently is celebrating, easy for you to say, 70 years, 1952 to 2022. Who knew? Um, so, yeah, I really ought to join up because I've got a couple of these things. This is a 300E, and very smart indeed, loving the uh, dark graphite colour, which I'm sure has a very interesting name, as these always do. These W124s are very, very nice cars. These are such solid, dependable machines and with a 300 engine in it, that's going to be quite a, a nice drive. This is good, I could just watch him. Oh, he, we just filming each other? Well, if you just do the talking, I don't have to bother. Okay. My throat has uh, gone already, so. This, this one is definitely a Ford Capri. Nice Ford Capri, nice yeah. Ford Capri, I, I think that's an Austin Allegro. Lovely Allegro, yeah, okay. So there you go. Have Thanks, Ian. Thank you. <laughs> 
And we did look at these on the way in on the preview and a lot of happy comments from people saying, my word, these things are amazing. And uh, a few people willing to give this uh, two door a home, although I think it probably already has one. So yeah, I, I would probably go for the estate myself. That is very cool indeed. Tall but sunbeam, and apparently there's a correct way of saying tall but sunbeam lotus. If there's two of them, is it low tie? I don't know. Anyway, right, we did look at these previously. I'll look at them again because let's face it, they're kind of fun. Uh, the comma, not an imp. The comma imp. Comma imp van. Did you know there was such a thing? You might have known there was an imp van. You might not have known it was badged as a comma though. Then, of course, got the sunbeam, which is the stiletto version. There's badge engineering at its finest here. And finally, We've got, is it an actual imp? I think it might be. Well, the Humber Club has grown a bonnet since we saw it the other day. Oh, I did just walk past a really interesting camper van of something. But looking at that front slope and those hubcaps, I'm gonna get it completely wrong. It's a BMC, I thought it was something German. Wow. BMC Austin JU 250 camper van. Wow, straight out of the carry-on movies. Very fun, if you look inside. Now that's a good way of saving money when you come to this show. Exhibit a camper van and hide in here till security go away. Ah, sunbeams. Sunbeams are plenty. Alpines, all round. Alpines for everyone. Blue and white color combo, works very well. Great looking cars. But let's have a quick look at that little sunbeam there. Ah, oh, that's his Roots Heritage Trust. This is where a lot of the thing, items from the Roots uh, factory in Maidstone wound up with the Roots Heritage Trust because they got involved and the people uh, redeveloping that site were kind enough to pass a lot of material over to these guys. So this is a little sunbeam rapier. I really do like these. Such a good looking little car and lovely proportions and they've got slightly American style fins and things. This would be a great project for someone. Okay, the auctions, which I'm not sure we can wander around because we're not exhibiting in this area, but we have some interesting stuff. Ah, Gaz Volga, which I believe is the car we drove on the channel a little while ago. I believe it'll be this one because I think there's only one available in the entire UK and uh, I know it is currently for sale, so it has to be this one. Next to that we have got salmon pink Mustang and wowie. Look at the roof on this, um, this Chevy. So it looks like it's got the folds of a convertible, but it's actually a metal hardtop. There's some wild things back in the 60s with these things. And then we have a very early Thunderbird. Unusual colour. Now, I don't know if this Ford is a genuine pickup or a conversion. It might well be a, a homebrew conversion, I'm not 100% sure. We've got oh, lovely Trans Am Screaming Eagle, 5 litre fuel injected. Oh, and then behind it we've got the row of very well, starting off a 205 GTI, then we've got the Golf Mark 7 GTI, which is a bit nondescript, and the GAN and a Honda. I think the Honda is perhaps the only one that's bordering into classic maybe. But then look at that Fiat Barchetta. We used to have a Barchetta exactly the same as that, black and black. Has it got the same wheels as ours? No, different wheels. I miss that car. And a Mustang Mach 1. Lots of graphics, lots of over-the-topness. Very entertaining car. And finally, Gran Torino Sport Estate, a Gran Torino wagon. Did you know they made these? Not a common choice. Well, certainly not a common choice over in this country for an import. Quite an unusual thing that someone has brought over. Another Mac 1 and more of the paintwork you might expect it to be in. And finally, a Plymouth. 1934 Plymouth convertible coupe. With dicky seat in the back. How cool is that? Um, we've got a tea bucket with blown... I'm counting too many exhausts. A blown V12. Wow. That is a little unusual. It's a bit better than the usual uh, Ford flathead or Chevy LS. Very interesting bit of work. And the more traditional 32, 34, typical hot rod style. 
Now these are good ideas. Hydraulic ramps they can lift up the back of the car in one fell swoop. I like the idea of that. And set up four of them and whoop the car up in one go. I may have misunderstood the point of this one though, no. because I assumed it was some car storage system. We can buy several of these, whip your car up on the nose and stack the cars diagonally underneath each other. But apparently it's not for that. Who knew? Maybe visiting the stall again later on to go and get Ian another tyre blow up. Now, as we said in the preview video, it is very much a Ford heavy event. This is Welsh Fords um, of many kinds here. Escort, Escort, Escort. RS is plenty in a 1.6 Mexico. Into a Sierra Cozzi. Sapphire is the best shape for these. So hopefully we'll catch up with some restoration work later in the day. But currently, this is the opening hours of the show while it's still fairly quiet and people are doing finishing touches to the cars, repolishing cars that got dusty and fingerprinty over the last uh, day, because this is day two now. Uh, so we've got the XJS Club, which I think had an anniversary not so long ago, didn't it? A variety of cars, some very proudly owned and displayed ones, and this one, which is the kind of thing I would turn up in <laughs> peeling lacquer small dents waiting to be restored restored sorry oh this is a jaguar experimental car brought back from the usa in the summer of 2020 features in a book experimental vehicle 16 left-hand drive converted to right-hand drive at some point ah for federal emission testing japanese specification 1977 wow so that'll be exciting to have that back on the road again here we have the jaguar drivers club more jags slightly more modern ones that's next 300 i think XJ Jaguar 420. This one's a 2.8 litre. 2.8 litre XJ. These are beautiful cars. This is where the Jaguar legend really came to fruition in my eyes. E type, the bubble hard top. I love that little bubble hard top. So cool. And this, is this a Mark 10? Oh, no, it's not a Mark 10, sorry. Sorry in the distance, I thought it was a Mark 10. It's not, it's a very, very, very dusty S-Type. That should be quite another restoration to be. We have the Lanchester Club. This is what a Lanchester looks like with no clothes on. It's partly restored, so I wander back later on. I might see some work Cracking on with it, putting this one back together. I wonder if it will drive home today. They will have to be uh, pulling their fingers out if that's the <laughs> final drive there. <clears throat> Dame of Darts. That's what a dart looks like without a body on it. And this is quite exciting. Historic Marathon Rally Group. These guys take classic cars and drive literally across the desert. With some sometimes not very modified cars, sometimes some quite extremely modified cars. Peking to Paris winner 2013. A Chevrolet Fangio. In the 1930s, Fangio, before he dominated F1, was an endurance rallyer and he preferred Chevy Coupes. So this one was uh, modified in that style simple and tough. This one, is it actually the genuine one? London, Mexico, 1970 car. The only surviving Maxi still being used competitively in events. Put together by BL Special Tuning. Fantastic. So these things, these land crabs, do look awesome as rally cars, like most things do. Midland Vehicle Preservation has got an interesting eclectic mix. A little CRX Del Sol. Again, we drove one of those on the channel some time ago. Herald Convertible and a little Riley. Let's wander past the rather lovely Lotuses. An elite. Past the rather lovely Rileys. We do rather like a Riley. Elf being put back together just here. A bit of chrome work to go on the front there. You might have seen a car like this at the November show. I couldn't remember what it was then either, but I did think it was extremely elegant. More rallies, then we go into the modern classic executive club. Where we've got cars which were 
posh or sort of posh in the last 20 years and modern classics are the emerging classics a great facebook group for this club modern classic executive so we have got an x-type estate it's a really really handy uh, usable daily modern classic we'll come back to this in a second and we have a Vauxhall Signum which is an amazing effort from Vauxhall early noughties to take an insignia and turn it into a four-seater hatch slash estate tourer with two individual rear seats uh, bucket seats in the back and make it into kind of a Rolls Royce of the uh, company car car park really was a spectacular failure but it's an interesting little unicorn nonetheless this one though is Quentin. Hello Quentin. Leather seat still looking good. Interior still looking nice. Ah, oh, great little car. Hood still looking good. And impressively, not leaking any oil. Ah, what a great little thing. Oh, he's checked me a mirror. Oh, Chris. What have you done, Chris, I'm, to my car? I'm sure Chris? No way it's like you dropping it to me. <laughs> <laughs> He's that abusing my car. I want my car back. <laughs> <laughs> He's abusing my car. It's <laughs> funny, <laughs> Okay, moving on again. We've got Reliance three wheelers and uh, not a single recreation of that TV show in sight. Oh, lesser spotted, Hub Night again. Um, <laughs> which is good. And then we have the famous Hub Night. Um, it's actually looking slightly better, in fact, than it was when it rolled in. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, restore it with a, a, a wash at some point. Next to that, more esoteric than the Reliance, we have the Bond Bugs. Such enormous, fun, tiny cars. I say this every time. Such a basic chassis on this thing. Interesting to see how it all fits together under the skin. Now I'm going to move back to the stand now because it's approaching opening time. Now this is the Wolseley Register, a word I always get told off for saying wrong. Again, interesting to see how these fit together under the skin, being a wooden framed body on obviously a big, big, big heavy duty chassis underneath. This is an Edwardian car, it's 1913 on it, so 109 years old. And still here, and I'm fairly certain we'll still run if I turn the key right now. Little 1500, very cute. And a Hornet. What year is this one? 1930 to 1935. Great looking little thing. Oh, before we walk away, got the Rileys as well. Bit of a, a rival for the Wolseleys back in the day. An RM. Great fun to drive these RMs actually. Really good driver's cars, even today. Um, very rewarding to, to punt around a track if you get the opportunity ever. Talbot, Talbot on its side. That I suspect will not be back on its uh, wheels and driving home tomorrow. It might be one or two jobs wouldn't get done. Probably the back lights wouldn't get fitted. More Lotuses. And some Porsches. Now I've got to say, this is probably the best looking S-Type I have ever seen. This belongs to Meguiar's Polish or one of their their people. That colour lowered on those wheels is just amazing. It makes me want to rush out and do exactly that to another S-Type right now. Not do it as a race car, because he's done it as full race spec. I just want to make it really comfy inside. Leather seats, heated air, all the rest of it. But that colour on those wheels, so good. Now we have more Jaguars. More Jaguars. Oh, it's Daimler Lanchester, sorry. I'll quickly buzz past some Porsches in pieces. Porsche 928. There's not a lot you can do to a Porsche 928 on a jack in the driveway. They're quite complicated cars, but they found something there. Brakes, I think. This one's going to need a little more than that. What else have we got around here? Oh, let's run back and get a cup of tea, I think. So we're now in the trade stand section of the show. Lots and lots of stuff to buy and see. You've got exciting wheels. This is a bit like the American racing style things with white wall tires. Tools are plenty. Uh, Immobilizers, actually quite a good idea. And there's loads of artists here, lots of interesting art. But something I've just been talking to, people keep on telling me on Twitter, whenever I get broken bolts and frozen bolts, which is all time, try some Bulldog BDX, the ultimate um, 
frozen bolt undoer um, penetrating oil. So I finally got a can of this stuff and I'm going to give this a go as soon as I get back in because people get telling me this is the best. It's made over in Northern Ireland so it's a nice sort of, sort of local British product which is always great to try and champion. So we'll go and give it a go on the next thing that's broken, which will be very soon indeed. Right, now what else have we got around here? We have got many Fords. We've got the Ford Mark 1 and Mark 2 Granadas. Sweeney spec. Rattle can black. This is a bit like... Um... So this is what I thought it was. This is the Granada from the Simon Pegg movie, The World's End, where it drove around Newton Haven doing the world's final pub crawl before the end of the world. Apparently, uh, get a lot of people who either recognise it and go, wow, that's amazing, that's a movie car, but they also get a bunch of people going, well, are you ever going to paint that thing? It looks really scruffy. But that's not the point. This is the car that featured Peg and Frost. <coughs> now, of course, we have multiple, multiple Capris going on over here. Looking absolutely lovely. These have been very nicely restored over here. No, Mark 1 register, that is. Moving across to the Tickford Capris. There's some rather interesting pipe work happening in there. So moving into the show proper, if you like, of the cars and things that are lurking down here, we've got many, many MGs. MGBs with wheels off, massive brakes as well. That's how you stop an MGB. Race prepped ones. And maestros, I think we saw these on the preview. There are actually quite a few maestros here today. This is uh, Black Country, you've got a maestro van. There are many more newer MGs. This is the uh, MG Rover era. Trophy yellow, fantastic colour. ZR, ZS, ZT register. And even the latest M little MGs, the MG3 Sports. Now this one, yeah, this is actually quite an exciting little story. This is Joshua's car. Hello. Okay. He has got this MG3 here, which is a rather nice metallic, almost night fire, but cherry red. And not only was it signed yesterday by Mr. Richard Hammond from That There Top Gear, this morning he met a gentleman called Dr. Ian Pogson, who was the lead engineer designing these things. So he's met the guy who invented the MG3. Isn't that exciting? Future classic developed here in the UK. Rather fun. It is sitting nose to tail with a rather race spec looking MGB, sort of Sebring esque rear arches. Um, world's biggest exhaust on an MG. We've got a very primrose yellow MG with an MGC engine in it because it's an MGC. And a nice green one with a very nice brown interior. And that one. So this car is Richard Hammond's car from the smallest cog garage, which is actually the MG he kept after the last episode they filmed of Top Gear. And it's now been restored in their company colours. I think it's going to be a modified engine of some kind put in it very soon. So let's move on quickly. Standards, we said done the standard joke yesterday. That's not been fixed yet, I was expecting more, more work on that one. Triumph 2000 probably. I can hear engines rumbling, I think it's the uh, Sporting Bears. Austin 1100. This is the ADO 16 Club. So many varieties. Badge engineering at its absolute finest. Austin MG, Wolseley. So sorry, I got a whole bit. Uh, how are we? Have some work going on. Uh, this is the Gay Classic Car Club. Always got an amazing selection of cars on this stand. And this one is a Mini being trimmed. And these guys know what they're doing, so. I also happen to have a car needing, in fact I've got two cars needing headlinings when you finish that. <laughs> if you fancy it later on, you, 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 that's, that's a no. Okay, fair enough. Had to ask. And this is something of a rarity, a 1972 Sunbeam Rapier. Another Roots Group speciality. A rather lovely coupe, very much in the American style with the wraparound glass, wind it down for pillarless windows. Cool car. But next to that, this is, a Valiant. This is an Australia, New Zealand car. Wolf Race alloys, absolutely huge. Straight six, big straight six. This is not a car you see very often in this country. A Hemi 245, this isn't it? Wowee. It looks like something from the Addicted to Base video from the early noughties. It's very, very cool indeed. 
of course, being Australia and New Zealand, it's right-hand drive as well, which is a big advantage if you're bringing it over. And that is next to a Mark I Espas, which have become very, very rare cars indeed over the last few years. A bit more restoration work going on in the spirit of the show. Original, it's all original on the exterior, but lots of work to bringing it up to snuff underneath, so it drives really well. Just could do with a bit of paint, but as the owner says, is it really that important to do it? If it drives perfectly, it's not going to go rusty. It's made of plastic. <laughs> and over here we have the many, mini metros we saw the other day. They've been joined by some more metros looking good. Here we have the Rover Sports Register. Well, we've got a Rover 10 from 1935. Original owner still in the driver's seat. Rover 25. Very similar colour to my VI, but I think it's a little bit more emeraldy in that shade. Very wow, I've never seen a Busby yellow Rover 800 before. That is startlingly yellow. Owned by British Telecom, first of all, I'm going to have to assume. We did look at the uh, P6s the other day. That looked very nice indeed. Nice original 2000 Series 1. We looked at the GWAC, in fact, two GWACs, a V8 GWAC and a TDI GWAC. These are the very, very, very first of the discoveries. Thank you. And of course, we looked at the, this Freelander. This is an Express Office Freelander. And the SD1s. And who does not love an SD1? They are fine, fine automobiles. Ah, this one appears to be lacking some of its parts. And I understand if that part doesn't rejoin the rest of the car by tomorrow, the owner is walking home. And over here, we have got the 200 400 Owners Club and the 200 VI. I didn't realize this white one is a 200 VI. I was gonna say like mine, but a bit smarter. And they appear to be having mechanical maladies. Say it again. They have mechanical maladies. <laughs> We are fixing something that didn't need fixing. Oh, OK, that's good then. This is what's known as a team building session. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is how, yeah. What, what are you not fixing? Uh, we're trying to put most of an aircon system in the car. Oh, OK. And relocate the thermostat from its bad position on a 200 to its good position on ah. a 300. Oh, OK, yeah. That's not a bad plan. Uh, Excellent. So this is the thermostat coming out uh, soon. Eventually. And then going back in again. <laughs> Superb. Oh. Lovely, I love it. Right, I'll leave those to it. But let's see the R8, the R3. It's basically my own car collection happening there. Um, Maestro, Van, Montego on sticks. Rover 800s. Rover 800s, yes, of many colours. And a lovely Rover jacket as well. This is really nice. You can buy one over there. Oh, really? Oh, when I finish filming, I'll come back and do that. And here we have oh, the MGs and Minis, more work, this is good, this is because it's the restoration show, people are fixing their cars on site, you bring a broken car, it goes home more broken. And here we've got the Rover Coupe Club, which are now all organised, and as we said the other day, it is an almost entirely red um, setup. A man under the dashboard, he's trying to steal this one, trying to hotwire it, but it's not working. Hello. <laughs> And there is the barn find coupe, which is having oh, these pipes which go horribly rotten on these, which I assume will be fixed at some point during the weekend. Um, where are we now? So much going on, so much to see. I really don't think I dwelled long enough on these, I'm guessing they're wraps, obviously, on these Jags. They are really very, very rather fun. A bit like, uh, the free, oh, that's not, that's not right, that's many, many sponsors. It's a charity car. Put your name on this car for, I don't know, some money towards a good cause. I can't see what the sign is. Uh, nearly 200,000 pounds raised to date. I'm assuming that's for a charity, not for whoever owns this car to put petrol in it. I don't know, current prices, maybe it is. Allards. Now, I do rather like this about this show is that every, well, every stand, a lot of stands have got the bare bones of the car, so you can see what an Allard look like before they put the Allard on top of it. There's like an X-frame kind of chassis on this one. It'll sleek things. Did we look at Jowett's yesterday? I can't remember. I don't think we did. One of Britain's fine brands. You always find 
owners of pre-war cars that are worth an absolute fortune do this kind of thing. They run them through mud with the wheels spinning and take them up hills in the rain. A Jowett type, a Jowett 1929 seven horsepower sports plowing through some mud as it should be. These, oh, another race prepared Jowett. Didn't spot this really from the outside, just looks like it's a bit low and, uh, and funky, but no, it's got a roll cage. It's got aluminium floors, <laughs> seats mounted hard to the floor, race dashboard. And a wonderful color of javelin there, like a metallic grass green. That is a 1953 javelin. Very, very nice. And here we have Armstrong Sidleys. I believe Steph from iDriver Classic drove a pre-selector Armstrong Sidley in a very current video. Basically limousines, a rival to a, uh, a Rolls Royce. This one currently wearing a couple of spare tires in the back seat. And this is very much the style of construction in the 1950s. With wood still very much in evidence in the frame of a coach built car. So next time we go to a pub quiz and ask which car had a Sphinx for a badge or for a radiator mascot, you now know it's an Armstrong Sidley. I wonder what they're up to on this one with the bonnet not just up but off. Which is a great thing of these uh, post-war, pre and post-war cars is that you can literally lift the entire front cowling away to get easy access to this behemoth of a motor. A whisper quiet straight six. This one's up on stands. Hood is having something done to its nether regions. Here we have the Coventry and Warwickshire Morris Minor Owner Club. I think there's a couple of Morris Minor Clubs all gathered together here. Well, that's very shiny, that white one. And the underbonnet noise insulation there. Crackle finish, uh, rocker cover. That just look a really nice restoration there. So we've got two, two travellers and a saloon. All looking very good, all A-series up. Oh, and a low light convertible. Check this thing out. Early ones had the lower headlights. These are quite rare and quite valuable. As these things go. 1951 hard top, which is converted to a convertible. Super duper. At least looks surprisingly good with a bit of rally effect stuff. The black bonnet and the bonnet straps. I hear a project rumbling in the background, don't you? Let's just whisper back over here quickly, away from the Mor Morris Miners for a moment, because we've just bypassed some uh, Jensen's here. Jensen Owners Club, Interceptors. Absolute beast of a car. Big American V8, Chrysler V8, I think it's 6.2 from memory. No, 6.3, sorry, litre Chrysler. Uh, 363 and a Torque Flight gearbox. And this amazing back end, the complete wraparound glass thing. Imagine the insurance company's intake of sharp breath if that gets broken. This one's some big twin exhausts. I'm guessing there's some uh, jiggery pokery gone on underneath. I love the red leather. Red, double red car. Fantastic. <clears throat> and this is the uh, Jensen GT from 1975. Looks a little bit like a, like a Datsun Z car in, in that, that styling, doesn't it? Cool looking thing. Princess Margaret didn't have one of these. Jensen Healy's, as we transition into the Healy Sprites Club. More A-series action. Cute little car, the bug eye. Great little thing. Now, this is good. Young Spridget enthusiasts. A lot of clubs trying very hard to get younger enthusiasts involved, which is a great thing. Keep the hobby and interest in classic cars alive for the future, because if older generations retire, give up motoring, sell their cars, and well, die ultimately, then who's going to carry on enjoying these cars and fettling them for the future? Did we look at the Morris, yeah, we did look at the Morris LCV Club stand briefly in the preview. So here we've got a panel van, pickup truck, drop side pickup truck, and uh, a glass sided van. Pretty, that's like a aftermarket thing, which was a, very much a thing back in the 50s to avoid tax. This looks very practical and useful. I can imagine the owner of this car gets bothered for tip runs all the time. And here we have 
Is this a minor chassis? There is not a sign. I suspect it is a minor chassis. It looks absolutely tiny compared to some of the other chassis we've seen today. Now we have still in a bit of a, a minor theme, the Morris Register. That being a minor body, look how tiny it is. It's like a little boat. Different, different kinds of craftsmanship needed for repairing, restoring and rebuilding these cars. They need to be good at woodworking as well. And, and in some cases, leather work. Here we have a very nice, I'm guessing, barn find, garage find. Oh, it's a minor, Morris 8, obviously, it's on the bonnet. I'm tired, it's the third day. <laughs> Give me some slack. And this is an 8 hardtop, which is roughly how it would look when finished, which I'm sure it will be. There's a lot of interest in these little cars. I love the little round waterfall y grill on these cars. Ah, oh, very period magazine sticker, hot car magazine. Uh, all the eights have come out to play this time. This is a 1948 eight. Again, lovely waterfall grill, looking very cool. Let's just buzz back over here and see what else we can find. We'll go back to the Saabs and Volvos in a moment. There's lots to pour over in that selection. Here we have the Austin Counties Club. This is an Austin 70 Hampshire pickup. And I don't know if this is a barn find or if this has just been used as is its entire life. Isn't it just the coolest thing ever? What a lovely, lovely thing. Oh, I love this at home. Engine runs, tip runs, going to Sainsbury's, you name it. Anything big goes in the back of the Austin. And this one under, under restoration. This is an A40 Sports. Uh, it doesn't have a year. I think it might be 1950, just briefly reading the blurb. But look, a lovely bit of work. Nice clean chassis, all new brake lines. That's going to be a little cracker of a car when that's done. Another one under restoration. There's a fair few uh, Austins coming back onto the scene soon. It's an A70 Hereford Coupe. But it looks like a convertible here. A uh, coupe convertible? I don't know. Lovely colour. Very modern for this car. And maybe someone stands to correct me in the comments. Was a dark metallic silver an option on Austin County's cars? I'm not sure it was. It looks lovely though. Very much suits the colour. Shows the lines really well. The, the highlights and shadows just pick it up really well. We've got the Austin Speed Hole, Austin of England. And moving across, we have got a van, another commercial. It's always nice to see a bit of a commercial thing going on because there were so many of these conversions around that haven't really survived because they were just used and used and used until they were destroyed. And then the business wrote it off and bought another one. And this one is an Austin A40 Devon van, 1952. Very utilitarian and simple grill, stamped metal panel, just a few little embellishments to make it sparkle, as opposed to some of the more ornate and expensive to produce grills of other cars. Of being a commercial, obviously the, everything is priced down. Businesses don't want to waste money on frippery, they just want to get their goods where it's going. Continuing in an Austin vibe, a little A30, wings off, which just bolt off I assume, and uh, yeah. Look at the suspension, new disc, new disc brake conversion. Oh, that's cool. A few more suspension components going on to that as well. That's going to be a fun little thing. These do become very popular rally and race cars, buzzing around circuits, historic races. A30 van, it could be an A35 van. Multiple vantage. This looks really good, the red and cream or grey. It's a great combination. Again, we see the pressed steel grill rather than the chrome grill, just a little chrome embellishment to make it stand out. Yeah, These do really respond so, so well to uh, a little bit of lowering, just minor modifications. It's got brake discs on this one as well. The uh, mini light wheels, black and silver. Great. Yeah, they... England's hot rod, if you like. So a quick go through the Saabs while we're here. First off, we have got a 96 GL Super. Cracking shade of blue, full length sunroof, spotlights. You can imagine that screaming through a Swedish forest somewhere. 
check it. This is slightly Allegro-ish in a way because we've got the inset squarish headlights and the big kind of slightly bulbous indicators and side lights. But it's interesting how this doesn't look quite so ungainly and awkward as the Allegro does. This just looks like a Saab, whereas the Allegro just looks like it's a bit unbalanced. Interesting. Here we have a Sonnet, not a Com over here at all. I've never seen a gold one before. I don't know if this is an original colour. So we have the original older Saab aircraft logo. This was Saab sports car. Magazine with his practical classics feature. This nice uh, camera rig shot on that one. Overdid that. So it's another 96 or 99, no, 96, I think, under that grill. And a 99, that beautiful metallic chocolate. 99 GLE. Check out these seats. They've got lederhosen and leather straps for seats on the interior. Isn't it fabulous? Mr. Hubnut has just wandered past, uh, uh, homing very indiscreetly at these uh, amazing push pull. Um, headlamp wipers, never seen anything like it, and gold, I love gold, on the grill, complementing the lovely chocolate metallic. Then we have my possibly favourite of the show, Saab 900 Turbo, looking a little bit low. This is the only car on the planet that can pull off three-spoke alloys without a hint of irony. Fantastic things. They are so big, they feel so heavy when you drive them, but they're just so, just so fun. So Saab, Hi. hello. Also wearing the non-ironic, rather quite cool three-spoke alloy wheels is the Saab 900 Ruby, a run-out model which was abandoned in 2007 in a farmer's field because it failed its MOT. I think it says on brake uh, hose or brake pipe um, corrosion. was resurrected to the extent of being towed out of the field until 2020. And now it's just been brought here and it's going to be restored apparently, which is very good. Incredibly rare run-out model, unusual paint. Headlamp wipers are a little crusty, but the interior on this is minty mint and unique to the car. So that'd be good to see that one running again soon. This one has another 900, an SE model with uh, some very wire spoky things. This is so much of its time, the wire spoke alloys. Think uh, Cavalier CDs of the time as well. So this is an awesome color. Teal and metallic teal velour seats. iPad holder on the uh, steering wheel. I'm not sure that's a standard option. More headlight wipers, wow, lovely. Amazing stuff, love it. We just did these guys, we'll quickly nip around the Volvos. We didn't do these ones properly the other day. A 121 Estate. Sorry, 221 Estate, what am I talking about? It's only 9.30, I can't even read our numbers yet. Uh, anymore even, or talk, oh, this is going well. Looks great on the American racing alloys on that. That is, I'm guessing, gonna be quite exciting. 145 Estate, this is pure Volvo, absolute 100% Jerry Ledbetter at its finest. Again, I'm coming back to the Allegro again for no particular reason. Inset headlights, outset indicators, work so well on this. Not so sure about the aftermarket sunroof, but hey, gives a bit of a convertible vibe in there. <laughs> Seats down, it becomes a truck. And there we have didn't the Satan have one of those? Yes, he did. 1970 P1800E. Swooping lines, fins, everything. Great little car. And of course, an Amazon. The archetypal Volvo Saloon. 131. I suppose you could call it 131. Everyone else calls it an Amazon. So moving across from this Volvo 131, we have more Volvos on the Enthusiast Club. This one is another 1800, P1800, and this one is another P1800, and this one is another P1800. Um, yeah, okay, it's, it's P1800 day. Um, is uh, very much celebrating the saint, Roger Moore, in possibly his best role, and into more volvo -ness. First of all, we have the police car. I think we might have seen this one back in November, the Leicestershire police uh, Volvo. V70 T5. Hopefully we have some whoop whoops and blue lights on this car later on when the show closes. That'll be quite exciting. A firm favourite of the police in this country for a long time. And we have, ah, lovely, lovely, lovely. Volvo 740 GL. Looks vaguely familiar to me for some reason. This one has been slightly modified with the uh, chrome arch lips 
the beauty rings and no center hubcap but has got the heavy tweed seats. I've got the, the blue velour seats in mine. Someone has added an aftermarket sunroof and this does what all aftermarket sunroofs eventually do, which is leak. Um, it's a really straight car, no, no rust on it. Lovely panels. This is a really, really nice car. What year is this? H27, 1990, so it's two years newer than mine. It has got very nice wipers. If no one's looking, I might just, uh, excuse me, don't look away, look away. <clears throat> Nothing to see here. Cracking little cars. I'm dwelling too long on this thing just because of personal interest. Then we have a 240DL, sorry, 245DL. This is the predecessor of the 740, which ran on until after the 740 finished, basically. This is a 1988 car, same year as my 740, in fact. So these two cars, although that's meant to be the predecessor and that's the successor, they both ran on together. They couldn't sell these things fast. They couldn't make them fast enough. Moose. Again, such a practical, wonderful thing that will last literally forever. And this one, more swoopy. So this is, everyone thinks of Volvos as the boxiest, squarest things on the planet, but then you look at this one, it's not at all, it's a 444. And like the Amazon, the 131, the, uh, the Saint car, the P1800, this is extremely curvy and swoopy. The PV is a, a lovely round king, very 1950s Buick Studebakery kind of inspired styling. Okay, the grill's quite square, but that's not really <laughs> where the squareness of everything else came from. But they were still very, very safety uh, thinking, forward thinking, clever cars. We do like our Volvo. Let's move down here slightly more. Oh, it's the uh, West Midlands Classic Car Club. They've got two cars here. They have a Morris. Hello, big Morris. It's an Isis, is it? I think it might be an Isis. Does it say? There's Morris 6. Okay, not an Isis then. Some of the 1950s Austin's Morrises do go a bit blurry around the edges. <laughs> Remember these. Aftermarket additional side light lighting and safety markers so you could park on the car on the road and not get clipped back in the dark days of fog and things. Rather lovely Rover P4 110. Deep maroon colour, sparkling in the morning sun. Viking ship resplendent. And this one's got very, very nice deep red leather armchair seats, lots of chrome, lots of wood, a doctor's car, poor man's Rolls Royce, all that kind of thing. Decent set of tyres on it too, which makes a big difference on these things. Really good. Let's wander back over. Oh, hang on, I've just bought. I've got to go to the other Volvos in a second, but first of all, let's look at these. This is a 1965 Velarex 16350. So these things were built in Czechoslovakia from the early 1950s up to about 1971. Made about 12,000. It's a canvas bodied three wheel motorcycle with two seats inside. So two people can sit abreast. This is like the, the uh, micro car, bubble car era of crazy inventions when you can drive these things on a motorbike license across most of Europe. But uh, yeah, if your choice was a moped or that, what are you going to choose? You've got a roof, even if it is only canvas. It's kind of a reverse Robin Reliant under canvas on a motorbike chassis under there. That's the Jawa uh, 05 moped. I don't know lots about mopeds. This is the Trabant Wartburg Club. This is Eastern European cars. Obviously, that being a Czechoslovakian thing. This is a Trabant Estate. This is 1990 Trabant 1.1. The last Trabant after more than 3 million. That's the actual last Trabant. That's incredible. These are famously made of compressed cardboard and uh, all the rest of this kind of stuff. <clears throat> this is what kept Eastern Germany running for decades before the Berlin Wall came down. And suddenly everyone chugged you know, clouds of blue smoke across the Berlin Wall when it came down into Eastern or Western Europe and tried to get rid of them as fast as they could. And then all of a sudden, Western Europeans, like you two, bought them as fast as they could because they thought they were cool. This is a slightly earlier version, the Trabant P60, the early Trabant. Lots of interesting history to talk about with these things. Fascinating cars. If you uh, follow Aging Wheels over in America, he's actually got one of these, which is quite remarkable, possibly the only one in America. Um, yeah, great fun things to own. Maybe that'd be a fun thing, a bit, a bit smoky. I can imagine problems with the u Ah, oh, here we go. I mentioned u a second, uh, sorry. I mentioned U2 a second ago. Uh, I think that was possibly featured on the uh, Act Young Baby artwork on the album cover. And this one, is a Zaz, Zafar, Zafaretz, 
968A. I know I said that wrong, don't have to tell me in the comments. Uh, from 1974, rear-engined, air-cooled. This one is actually made of metal, unlike the Trebbies. This is high class. Very 1974 colour. Even Eastern Europe managed to get involved in the bright, bright kitchen colour schemes of the day. Oh, your Skoda's carrying on that same theme. This is your yes. traditional rear-engined... Oh, this is a... Uh, Coupe, I didn't notice that from the front. A rapid coupe. It didn't have a hint of irony when they named it. And here we have an electric favorite, an Elmo pickup. So this was just an experimental design to see if they can make an electric pickup work at the time by Elmo Electromobile. But suddenly it's becoming very, very current and relevant again. A face you may recognize from your radio set. Uh, moving away, we have got Audi Quattros. I'm hoping if we can get back later on, we might see some work going on this one, but the, uh, the rather lovely red carpet does suggest this is perhaps more for display rather than just for, for work going on. But interestingly, check out the uh, pulley system so close to the bottom and so close to the front, and these pipes hidden inside the, uh, the bumper bars. It's a little bit vulnerable, but I guess they knew what they were doing. I think everything on Audi's is pushed right to the front, which all kind of gives them their rather unique handling characteristics. They've got a nose-heavy kind of a feel that they get. Now, behind the uh, epic Audi Quattros, which are, of course, rally legends, we have got the little Fiat Pandas, which, let's face it, you can't not love a Fiat Panda. It's like kicking a puppy. <laughs> this one being the Seat version, because they carried on making them as Seats for many years after the original uh, Fiat's went out of production. It's a Panda 40, 903cc engine. Panda on the seat and on the back. Excellent, love that. And we have the newer versions of the Pandas. These are fantastic, as this one is, a 4x4. If you go to Italy still, you'll see the original Panda 4x4s chugging up and down the mountains, and many more of these, as they eventually wear out, taking their places. Can we see underneath this one and get a bit of 4x4 action? Can we see the... Uh 4x4 mechanism. I can't see this from where I'm standing, so I'm hoping you're seeing something rather exciting. This one's even got winter tyres on it, so this is an unstoppable winter monster. A Fiat Uno Turbo. A Fiat Uno Turbo. Now, can we see the turbo hidden in this little engine bay? So tiny, so much fun. Great little cars, great colour as well. Love that the square was the almost not forgotten exactly hot hatch of the 90s, but the one that's one of the lowest surviving numbers of hot hatch of the 90s, which is the era of the greatest hot hatches after all. Fantastic tweed check plaid seats because it's fast enough to go to plaid, obviously, these things. And another amazing car, the Fiat Coupe, designed by the same man who designed my Alpha 145 and then notably went on to BMW to do the infamous bangle butted 7 Series and flame edge design. Yes, Chris Bangle, of course, was behind these things with these controversial slashes, a man who never feared a bit of controversy in his styling. This one looks like it's not a bad car, but it's a bit flat in places, so perhaps it's gonna have a bit of work done to it. 20 valve turbo, again, fantastic. Amazing caramel leather interior. If eventually my Alpha 145 does try my patience just that much too far, this is what I'll be replacing it with. Maybe I should take this one home instead and find that that's actually more reliable than my 145. This here is another unusual rare fit, a 128 SL 1300 Coupe SL. Mustard yellow, tiny pretend alloys that are actually stamped steel. Little tiny side repeaters, twin headlights because power, and the old style Fiat um, crest inside the winner's wreath. Black vinyl seats because 1970s. Check out those stalks and that interior, that steering wheel, the twin spoke steering wheel is just so, so cool. The badge is actually slightly larger than the car. Clear through the Quattros, and over here we've got 10 minutes for the show open, so I can't be here too long. I'm in the furthest point away from where I am living on my stand right now. We've got more Audis. We have got some. I'm assuming that's man doing work, not a dummy with the fake legs lying under the car. Um, first of all, 1986 Coupe Quattro, 
perfect color, original wheels. The engine is absolutely crammed into the engine bay. You'll notice if you're into these things, it has headlight washers but no wipers. So moving back a couple of years, we have a 1973 Audi 100. Again, absolutely minty mint, looking beautiful. You'll notice the differences in styling, but also the similarities. The shapes are kind of there, but being a 1970s car, we have this slightly jutting prominent prow on the grill. Uh, the um, edge of the bonnet has got the little chrome strip. Not uncommon in the early 70s. Like the Rover P6s did this up until about 1969, 70 as well. But the interesting lozenge headlights. Lovely, lovely big saloon from Europe. Moving over, we have got 1981 Type 43, if you want to call it that, a 2.1 carbureted engine, 5S, five cylinder, I'm going to go with that. Left hand drive from Europe. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, this is life on Mars. This is the full on Gene Genie edition Quattro Sport. <laughs> How on earth did a copper manage to afford that on his salary? He was clearly on the take. And we have the practical classic stand. I've managed to not see anything on the stand all day. There's a show with all kinds of uh, interesting interviews and stuff happening all weekend. I haven't seen a single thing of it. Staff car sagas, they have some interesting stuff going on with their cars. Matt's Morris Minor, uh, supercharged Morris Minor. Ian Tisdale is a contributor, has got his Tatra 1938. James Walsh, James was over on the half stand yesterday, didn't take a single picture, just chatted for a while because we're fools. Oh, he's hiding behind his car. He's getting out of his boot because James was actually sleeping in the boot of his car last night. How was, how was he sleeping in the boot? All right, yes, as you can see, there's plenty of room. It's, it, it is quite commodious, yeah. It is quite commodious. Of course, um, the fuel tank lives under the uh, rear seat of a DS, which is quite revolutionary for yeah, uh, 1955. Very safety-minded. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, as a consequence, we have this really deep boot where yeah, so, uh, I can uh, sleep at night. So save a fortune on hotels. Exactly, and, uh, yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. Offering uh, COVID tests here today. If oh, would like to... excellent. <laughs> Superb. The DS. The DS. I've not seen this car in person yet, and it's absolutely fantastic. I am more than a little jealous of James having this car. It is a beautiful, beautiful thing. James has far too many Citroëns. Is, is, is there such a thing as too many Citroëns? No such thing as too many Citroëns. Absolutely. Exactly, exactly. Wise man there. It's a little bit scruffy, sorry. It's That's... not the shiniest stuff. A but few people over the weekend going, oh, it's, it's got a scratch here and there. Well, that's because I use it. It's, a, it's, a, it's not an everyday car exactly, but it is a, well, a most days car. Every day. oh, it's, it's been a great day to <laughs> driver, actually. It's yeah. getting it turned here and now. Well, off you waft. It's well, yeah, it's looking on Facebook at your adventures in the thing. It's like, yeah. You can use it every yeah. day. People think that these cars are precious. I mean, I, it makes me nervous because I think I don't want to crash it. No, of course. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, you know. It, it, it's it's a car. It's supposed to be used. It's, it's what it's for. You yeah. Drop it. I, it, I, they don't it was a torrential rain a couple of weeks ago, and mm. I got told off by a, a gentleman at a filling station. You shouldn't be driving this car in this weather. And I thought, well, it's a car. It's got it, windscreen. It's designed to live in it. Yeah. It's got rubber bits around the edge. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, the only thing I was, it's not going the salt, is it? So the salt absolutely. maybe. Yeah. So but even rain. It was in salty weather. There's such a thing as a hose pipe and a bucket well, and a sponge, and if you've rust proof the car, it's about people who worry about their cars catching fire. If you've got really good quality uh, fuel hoses, you should never worry about that kind of thing. You should never worry about your car catching fire. It's the same with salt. Mm. If you've rust proofed your car, yeah. properly, you shouldn't worry about rust. Actually, yeah, you said that. My, my car, my Crown Victoria, that came from Ohio, which is the most heavily salted state in America. <laughs> There we are then. So, yeah, anyway. Fantastic to see it here. Oh, thank you, yeah. Barn finds revisited on the Practical Classics Classic World area. We have got the Capri, which was from a rusting shell to this absolutely magnificent beauty. We've got Cortina under there, which I can't see right now. Nissan Cherry Europe, one of the most rare cars on the planet, never mind just in the country. Alpha Arna with a Nissan badge. Alpha dealers, Nissan dealers, both kind of hated them, but loved them in weird kind of different ways. We'll talk about that later. In fact, go back to my Alpha Arna video, Nissan Cherry video. One final one, Hillman Minx Californian. Right, now I have literally got to run. More Audis, I haven't got time to stop. I'll come back to this later on, I hope. Bagheeras, Matra Bagheera, fantastic. Three seats across the front, utterly unique apart from the McLaren. 20 odd years later, here we very quickly have the Simcas, barn find Simca 1000, rear-engined, 
stunning little cars. Oh, such a pretty king. It's almost America meets Russia kind of styling. Um, oh, wow, Mr. Celia. NSRS A stand Dodge. Oh, need to come back for that in a moment as well. Oh, my goodness me. Show is opening. I'm not on the stand. I'm going to be in trouble with the gang. The show is open. I'm in the wrong hall. I'm in trouble. Uh oh. The Morris Miner people have gone back to their Morris Miners and their tools are out. Will the cars run by the end of today? Yeah, of course they will. The Morris Miners are A series. It's not a problem. A Trueno modified AE86 full on everything you want to see in one of these things. This is a car I totally missed the boat on because I loved them and they were cheap and I thought I'll get one one day and suddenly they're not cheap at all and everyone wants them because they're absolutely awesome. Oh, you've got the uh, extra boost gauge. Oh, 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 oh. Initial D made these cars worth such an insane amount of money when they were worth every penny but no one knew which is so disappointing because now I'll never have one. <laughs> oh, if you like some more modern equipment in your car, then how about some pure retro but modern underneath? Or modern with modern on top? From Smith's Instruments, sir. Here's a, if you like your vintage records, this is like 78's pure proper vintage. The French Can Can Polka, wow. Wasn't planning on going quite that old, but this is a... Uh, the mudlocks. Vinyl, now very popular. I'm listening to vinyl in my own office at home, believe it or not. <laughs> Vintage cameras as well. Heinkel wheel spinners, that's a... Someone somewhere will be wanting a scooter car wheel spinner as well. Or a Bletchley T60. If you like cameras and model cars, you're here in the right place. Oh, fabulous. <laughs> You're on camera, don't say beep or beep. Okay, well, <laughs> I was going to say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy that you've caught me looking for yet more rubbish. <laughs> caught red-handed. I'm looking for two units. Yeah. Oh wow, cool. Put your custom brand branded workwear clothing. I've got my Alfa Romeo overalls hanging up on the side of the garage, but because they're from a dealership, I've never worn them to work in because obviously that would be silly. Oh, Volvo ones. Oh, cool. Ten quid for a Volvo overall. Oh. I think I might be wearing something like that home in a minute. Nissan, LDV, Citroen, Nissan again, Roy Shepard, don't know that brand. So I think I might need to acquire. And what do you think? Now modelling. Okay, give us a 12, Matt, give us a 12. Oh, Looking good. Really nice stitch on it's that genuine thing. item, it's genuine from a dealership. Is it actually genuine? From it is, yeah, 10 quid, bargain. Okay. And it's still quite busy, late on Sunday afternoon. People are drifting away, but the show is still quite a lot going on. The live stage is shouting away. It was Ant Hampstead a minute ago up there. Not quite sure who's up there now. Drawing a crowd though. Well, I can't see from there, but we're going to disappear down into the displays again and see what else we can find. So here we have the Young Members Triumph Group, which is a great initiative. I mentioned this earlier. Good to have young blood in the in the classic car scene and this is really really cool this is a triumph 2500 mark ii estate slammed on lattice alloys obviously having a bit of work done to it this is just fantastic bit of restoration work pinstriping because it's a triumph that is awesome can i ask a quick question is the engine standard on this this has actually got a 2 litre in it, the is a 2.5 pi, but it's got a 2 so litre. So you've, you've, you've modified it in the wrong direction? Temporarily. Okay. It's been a 13B rotary engine before long. Really? A Mazda? Yes, Mazda. That is going to be very exciting. Yeah, I'm going NA with the Renault Sits for the time being. Um, but yeah, hopefully before, uh, before November show. Awesome, I look forward to seeing that. Thank you. Thank you.
Now, slightly different from my modified Triumph 2500 with a Mazda rotary is this Triumph Gloria. 14.6 light saloon. Lots of lovely bumblebee yellowness. It's a wasp on the road. Do rather like that. Next to another Triumph, which is a smaller Gloria, 1460 Southern Cross. This hood ornament bonnet mascot is so, so cool. Can you imagine trying to get that through IVA today? They would laugh you out of the building. No, oh, Allegro's. Did we look at Allegro's yesterday? I really can't remember what I've seen so far. <laughs> Allegro hearse, perhaps? Rather fun. I'm assuming that exhaust pipe is gonna be bolted back to that in the next two hours, otherwise it's got a rather noisy drive home. This one up in the air, having uh, hydroglass, sorry, what am I talking about? Read the sign in front of you, you fool. <laughs> so we've already covered this uh, press car Freelander, but now we've got a three-door, which is the one that basically everyone should want because the three doors look awesome with the uh, roof bars and you get the hard plastic lockable low space cover. And this one, as well as having the little uh, light guards, which looks so good, this has got the uh, ex every extra base that you can think of. The accessory kit was extensive for these. So we've got the uh, wheel arch covers, we've got the triple door guards, we've got uh, the steps, you name it. Oh my word, we've even got Thank you. the light pods. This is an option I've never seen. I don't know if this is a genuine Land Rover thing. We've got the nudge bar, which came with the extra pod lights. It's like a rally car meets the beach buggy. What a thing. Okay, new information. This is probably a prototype for the Rally Recce and Rally development, which never quite happened, uh, pod lights, which got used by Colin McRae on his recce cars. This is part of the CVC register for Land Rovers, where a Land Rover was the first car in the logbook. Amazing, I never knew that was a thing. Now, I didn't properly look at this earlier. Or did I? I can't remember. It's been a very busy weekend. This van, Marina van, was restored by the same guy who did the uh, Minder Capri in our series recently. This is a nut and bolt restoration better than factory. And if you saw how good the Minder Capri was, this is as good, if not better. Seven kilowatt, superb quality. Lovely, so classic car restorations in Kent. Did a good job, love that. Marina on sticks, hover marina. Followed by Marina camper van, which hasn't quite been put back together just yet, but I'm sure time will tell and we'll have something good. Oh, practical skills at work. I'm making a shield for a very tiny Captain America just here. <laughs> <laughs> the kind of thing everyone needs to know. If you own an old car, that's a really handy thing to know how to do. Followed by Cleo Williams. I drove one of these the other day, not for the video, sadly, but did enjoy the experience a great deal. It's got a lovely raspy engine note. Amazing live chassis. It's just, oh, so good. Oh, and here we have a 2CV in sliding back together. Last minute, only a few bolts, and they can probably drive home. It's a 2CV. Even if you leave the exhaust off, it'll still drive home. Just smell a bit. Good luck. Driving at home, I take. No, no, it's going home on the train. Right. <laughs> I shattered my illusion. <laughs> we have, I don't know what club this is. VBOA Vauxhall Club. Uh, Senator, I think it is. With many pieces next to it. Cars, you don't really see that often anymore. Senator's wonderful cars, mostly been banging raced or scrapped, sadly. Mark 1 Cavalier, lovely canary yellow colour, beautiful. And this one, that looks like. Chevette, no, a Skona possibly. Hard to tell with all the extra race from paraphernalia. All around it. Ah. Now you have a buzzing Manta. Looking good. With turbo red top. This is going to be significantly brisker than anything Vauxhall or Opel envisioned. But the chassis on these are pretty good, so that will handle it quite happily. Awesome, love those wheels, the bore bits filling those fat arches perfectly. More Mantas, there's the Manta Club, so we'll find many Mantas in the Manta Club, which makes sense really if you think about it. This of course is the Andrews style from the Cray. Um, 
era of rallying when, when rallying was possibly at its best with a nostalgic tip of the hat just there. That motor looks significant. I'm sure someone's going to comment on the thing that this is actually the genuine car that McRae actually raced. If I said that, it would turn out to be absolutely wrong, so I'm not going to say that. Okay, Practical Classics stand. They've got Danny Hopkins Interceptor. They have got Matt Tompkins Little Austin 7 Special. And it is very special indeed. Wow, it looks kind of wide in that configuration. And finally, we've got Charlotte Vowden's MGA Frisky. This car has been everywhere. It's been all around the world. Exported to America, imported to the UK, again, converted to right-hand drive, raced in the Monte Carlo. It was a granddad's car, and she now drives it virtually as an everyday thing. We need to get her on the channel to have a chat about this sometime, because this is a fascinating story. Over here we've got Renault people. Hello Renault people. <laughs> Renault 25. My, God, my granddad had a Renault 25 with the talking dashboard, the V6 and all the extras. He was so proud of it because it was so advanced and he loved gadgets and technology. Unfortunately the computer went madly wrong on it. It shut down the alternator on a drive home from London one day night. One night I should say. And uh, eventually put a piston to the side of the block. Other than that it was beautifully comfortable and uh, so, so crammed with technology of the day. And he sold it and went back to Granada. Never went to Renault again. Anyway, that's a side story. Renault 19. Surprisingly rare cars, but very, very nice things. Such nice, simple lines. They're, I'm not gonna call them plain, but they are simple lines, which looks good. Got Renault 5, the early Renault 5. No one ever has a bad word to say about a Renault 5 for the simple reason they are just excellent cars. They do exactly what they're meant to do. Now this is perhaps the star of the show for me for doing this uh, colour configuration standing with Ukraine with the yellow and blue Citroen 2 CVs here on the stand. Isn't that cool? Little tin snails, always excellent. Now, nipping back over here quickly, we have additional Citroenage. First off, we have another DS, or is this an ID21? There's an ID, oh, it doesn't say really. Uh, a little bit of work going on on the hydro, oh, revealing the hydraulics back here to see what goes on behind the wing, under the scenes of this thing. Clever, clever technology in these cars mechanical technology rather than electronic technology. Over here we do of course have an H-Van. Favourite of man bun baristas everywhere. Ran for 40 years, virtually unchanged. The last one I went in one of these had a five-cylinder Audi Turbo in it, which meant it was a little bit brisker. An amazing camper van as well, that's that one. And finally, on this one, we've got a Citroen CX. 16 years in production, I never realised that. So some, some bloke called Mike is shouting over on the, on the stage annoyingly. Um, front wheel drive, transverse axle, stuck underneath this thing. Ugh. Oh, this one's clean as a whistle. Solid old car. Apart from that door, ignore that. Look at that lovely interior. Single finger wheel, manual gearbox as well, nice. Okay, let's vanish over here because stand I've managing to be of not seeing all weekend despite meaning to come over and say hello all weekend is where it all began for the mini adventure the Y register so we've got an S we've got another S we've got a Y we've got a 51 and hiding in the background we've actually got my own car on the poster <laughs> I'm here with, I'm always here without even bothering to try isn't that easy how lazy is that say here why minis? This is where the first of the minis began in 2001 before the public can buy them. Hurrah! So, leaving the Y Register minis alone, the beginning of the current generation of minis, we have the older generation of minis, but hiding under the body of Midas's or Midai, because there are mini Midai on the stand. Fiberglass, 
uh, coupes and well, sports cars basically built on mini running gear. This one though does have more Roverage and modern twin cam 16 valve hiding under there. That will be quite rapid. I love the wheels on this one. Now moving over here we have many more minis. Loving the orange theme going on there. Oh, bubble cars. I missed the bubble cars. Trojan clubs. It's getting a bit sporadic now because I need to get back to the stand again and the show's about to end. Oh, it's like a boat without any wheels on it, doesn't it? <laughs> How much fun is that? Maybe we should invest in a bubble car, really, for the next thing for the barn. It wouldn't take that much space. I mean, the Crown Vic's taken up all the other space. I might as well get something tiny now to, to make up for that. Balance things out. So we've got mini estates, mini clubbins. That's all good. Midlands Mini Club. Calibra's Definite Future Classic, which is fast and fun. Custom vans, excellent. V8 powered. <laughs> V8 powered escort van, which is also chopped, gassed. Oh, v oh Viva van, sorry, it was an escort van looking at the headlights. My mistake, my bad. Edelbrock stuff on top of that. That's uh, proper old school custom. Oh, another Cavalier. Does wonder if Steph knows that there's a rival Cavalier. Is that an SRI with those wheels on it? Oh, GSI 2000. Excellent. Oh. Okay, so I'm rushing back to the stand now to say goodbye because there is a big hoot off in a minute. And uh, so thank you for watching this. Hope you've enjoyed this adventure through the uh, NEC. And that was the NEC Fractal Classics Classic Cars Lancaster Insurance Resto Show 2022. Goodbye, everybody.